So I've seen a lot of uh, uniquely executed films this year. Mother, Killing of a Sacred Deer, Brawl on Cell Block 99, even The Florida Project had its oddities. All brilliant films, but you'd be surprised that I would also lob the death of Stalin into this category as well. It doesn't look like much, it's a period satire about the direct events following Stalin's death in 1953 and the eventual de-Stalinization of Russia. It sounds like a bit of a snooze fest, but hear me out. This is an Armando Iannucci film, so there's more to it. This Scotsman created perhaps not only the best British satire of all time, the thick of it, but could you imagine he also created the greatest American political satire of all time in the name of Veep? Iannucci, as a comedy writer and director, fundamentally understands the ridiculousness of politics in society and workplace culture. His humour derives entirely from the relatable overreaction and self-preserved nature of people, and their subsequent inability to work with others, and in many cases, just simply aren't very good at their jobs you can all understand where I'm coming from, and especially in the case of the death of Stalin given the revelations of a particular character's misconduct, a lot of his work is indirectly very relevant to today's uh, controversial climate, shall we say? Should you shut the fuck up before you get us both killed? You don't have to be a history expert to follow the almost exclusively dialogue-heavy plot. The beauty of Iannucci's work is that you don't need to understand the politics to follow the narrative, you only need to understand the selfish, treacherous, and hypocritical antics of the characters to make sense of their positions on the conflict. If you've ever seen Iannucci's previous film adaptation, In the Loop, this is the same type of performance emphasized filmmaking. Steve Buscemi, Jeffrey Tambor, Michael Palin, Simon Russell Beale, Audrey Roseborough, Rupert Friend, and Jason Isaacs are all exceptionally brilliant in their exaggerated but still humanly restrained portrayals of real Soviet individuals, and naturally it's extremely difficult to nominate one particular MVP, as every character brings a unique voice to the table, both figuratively and, well, literally. One of the most genuinely hilarious commitments the film makes is not having any of the actors attempt a Russian accent. Of course it'll put off some period drama purists or whatever, but it actually makes the absurdist humour even more meta to the extent that the film has this theatrical reconstructive quality to it in the same vein as a Monty Python sketch. It's basically like a bunch of very deliberately selected season actors trying to retell the story of post-Stalinist Russia in a way that seems to lampoon Oscar Beatty type period dramas by bizarrely having a faithful and comprehensive understanding of its history while still having the creative freedom to caricature the ridiculously overzealous and corrupted behaviour of Soviet Russia. <laughs> it's funny this film released close to murder on the Orient Express because the overtly vain and serious tone those dramas try to maintain inadvertently calls attention to itself, whereas this film openly acknowledges it by embracing the theatrics of its genre in a way that doesn't feel like a tiding some sort of smug dramatic license. For example, each actor's performance subverts your expectation of their character's presentation, like Jason Isaacs playing Russian Army General Gregory Zukev, who enters the fray like this but acts like this. I'm going to have to report this conversation. Threatening to do harm or obstruct any member of the Presidium in the process of looking at your fucking face. <laughs> I took Germany, I think I can take a flesh lump in a waistcoat. There's this really odd modernized effect given to their behavior and dialogue that contrasts with the historical setting. Jason Isaac's character is just a Yorkshire lad looking for a fight, but it doesn't discredit how accurate each nuanced detail of the real history is. The film might come off as a pantomime, but its liberties to the storytelling don't skew the reality of the situation and the imposing and threatening presence of the characters. It's Stalinist Russia, so naturally murder and torture linger persistently in the background, but the film never calls direct attention to it, instead shrugging it off as just another mundane routine task in the life of Soviet Russia that everybody morbidly accepts, satirically making the commonplace nature of violence seem way too casual and ordinary, because it was. In fact, it adds a very impressionable sense of tension as characters are in a constant state of paranoia about being executed for treason or plotting, given the entire film is about an internal power struggle. It never downplays Stalin's reign of terror, and you do feel a distinct vulnerability to every character as anyone could end up on the list. I mean, Stalin might come off as a playful child in his scenes, but you certainly wouldn't say no to him, that's for sure. It uses humour to reinforce the impact of Stalin's power and the perpetual fear that exudes throughout the country. If you walk into this film thinking it's going to be something like a Tom Hooper film, not only does it have the detail and attention of his work and the cold, uptight atmosphere of your common period drama aesthetic, but subsequently it embodies a bombastic clowning nature that makes this not only one of the funniest films of the year if you like dry wit, but by far one of the best period dramas of the year, because it doesn't hide its reality behind caricature or dramatic license, 
humor essentially becomes a powerful tool that helps to embrace the complexity and genuine human absurdity of a dark time in history. If you have any recommendations for obscure or underappreciated films, leave them in the comments below and thank you to anyone who supports the Domain show on Patreon. With continued help, I'll be able to launch this show on top of my regular schedule, so make sure to go check out those rewards. And until next time, stay safe and I'll see you all next week. Bye!